Hi everyone, my name is Katrina and I'm one of the Women in Science Ambassadors. So instead of our usual written blog posts, we're going to try something a little bit different today and try and do a vlog um, and just see how that goes for the future. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about placements. Um, I've just come back from my placement year and I'm going to be talking a little bit about that experience, um, dealing with that with Covid and then also part of the adjustment period of coming back into uni and it's not as easy as it might seem. So for my placement year I was working at Bristol Myers Squibb which is a large pharmaceutical company and I was working part of the chemical process development analytical sub team, bit of a mouthful, um, but I was essentially working to help develop analytical methods so I was using uh, analytical techniques such as liquid chromatography, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry and I also got to use some quite new and upcoming novel techniques such as charged aerosol detection uh, so being able to have that experience was really great. It's something that's you know up and coming in the market uh, So I know that in the future it might be something more regularly used. So I've got that experience already. So that was really great So the theory and the knowledge that you get from uni is essentially just put into practice So you, at the university you do get some lab time uh, some lab modules So I was able to use a couple of those techniques beforehand uh, But it is quite different when you're using it every single day uh, for several hours you know you're trying to um, problem solve sometimes the instruments don't always work uh, they're quite good at that sometimes and so you've got to you know do a little bit of um of the thinking of problem solving you know where could this fault be um is it like a, a fault in the pumping system is it a problem with your mobile phase maybe it's incompatible um should you try to use a different column is there maybe something contaminated onto the column that you're using and so there's like a whole checklist of things that you go through or it might be something really really simple like you haven't put the sample of the tray in properly and it just won't run uh, that has happened before and it's a little bit embarrassing um but you know everyone jokes about it everyone knows that those things happen so it was a really really good learning environment to pick up all those different skills um, all those different sort of like little pieces of information that you kind of pick up and you build on and then you can apply it with someone else so while I was on placement there was someone new who had joined in the last couple of months and because I built up all this sort of knowledge and this big bank of information just from using uh, these techniques for so many days so many hours so many months um, that at that point even I was able to help her and give suggestions that might help improve her separation, improve her chromatography. So I said, oh, you know, have you tried using a cyano column? Um, and unfortunately it didn't work, but it was a good idea. And uh, it did help improve and she ended up using a different technique. Um, but you sort of find this place in the workplace where you get to a point where you can actually start to contribute as well. And you're able to really be part of the team and you know, you're you're able to be part of those conversations because now you understand more about what's going on. And that first couple of months is just sort of that period of getting all that information, just soaking it in. But like, I felt like a bit of a sponge sometimes, you know, where you've just got all this information, you know, conversations in the office, um, people making comments in the lab and you're just sort of picking up on all these things. So by the end of it, you're able to really apply it, really understand what's happening understand you know when you think back to your lectures oh that makes a lot more sense now i can understand like why that happened uh, or why they said that you should try and adjust you know ph or be careful of the pka and things like that so i know that all that information is going to be incredibly helpful incredibly useful uh, especially going into third year we have the investigative projects so we do extended experiments where uh, we'll be given sort of the opening outline and then we can take it and take it wherever we want in what kind of direction, which parameters we want to change, uh, maybe what materials we want to use. So being able to take all of that lab knowledge, um, you know, I was in the lab for several hours each day, uh, probably spent half my time there, half in the office. So taking all those skills, putting it into the lab, knowing what parameters can affect different things, uh, and especially then going into my master's where I'm hoping to do an analytical project, I'm going to have so much information based in that specific area that I want to go into uh, that I feel like it's going to put me in quite an advantage to everyone else um, who maybe hasn't done a placement. So that's been really, really valuable to me. But it's not just about knowing what you want to do, but also what you don't want to do. And that is equally as important. And people often forget that. So, for example, for myself, uh, we actually had a synthetic chemist in our group. And the sort of things that he was doing, 
didn't really appeal to me as much as the analytical work that I was doing. And it meant that I was able to sort of, uh, not necessarily rule it out, but put it into an area where, um, you know, I'm maybe not so keen on that. And maybe that's not quite where I want to go in the future. And that is really important as well. I also know other people who did a year in industry and they didn't enjoy it at all. They didn't like working in the labs, uh, they didn't like the company they were working for, whatever it might be. Um, and it means that they've now decided, actually, I'd rather do an office job, I'd rather do something, you know, science comms. So it just kind of shows that you don't have to like your placement. It is only 12 months, so you've got to think, you know, there is a way out of this, there is an end to it. So if you don't enjoy it, you know that you will be able to get out of it and you don't have to ever go back to that again. Um, for me, it also meant that I wasn't that picky on the area that I went to. I know some people prefer to be closer to, to Loughborough. Some people prefer to stay, they wanted to live at home. So they were quite selective on the places they went to. So it meant that they could just commute from their hometown. Um, but, you know, for only 12 months, I decided, whatever, don't really mind. Um, I'll just find a good company to go and work at. Uh, so that's sort of how I ended up just outside Liverpool. So outside of just the placement, the thing that people tend to forget is that it's not just the placement. Uh, you're also having to live out somewhere else. So for me, again, somewhere else I've never been to before. So I had to, you know, find my way around, learn how I was going to get to work, all the rest of it. And then also all the little niggly, adulty things that you have to do. You know, if your washing machine breaks, you have to organise a call out for someone to come and fix it. Um, you know, if your fire alarm battery runs out, you've got to learn how to change it. All of those little things that you pick up, um, I think are also really valuable. Um, people don't really get much of experience before that. It is a sort of a whole holistic experience of what your life is going to look like once you graduate. You know, you're going to be living out somewhere else. Um, you know, you have to pay in rent, paying your bills, all the rest of it. You're going to be having, you know, you'll be working during the day, but you've also got to manage your work-life balance. You know, do you want to, do you still want to go to the gym? Do you still want to play sport? Any of the hobbies that you're trying to manage? You know, how much do you cook? Do you meal prep? Things like that. There's so much outside of just the actual placement working hours that you're trying to figure out as well. Um, that you learn a lot from and how you see yourself and how you want to basically manage yourself and manage yourself as an adult in the future. And these are all sort of the soft skills that you get from it. So I've already kind of touched on some of them, um, but confidence was the main thing that I got from it. And I know a lot of other people will also agree. Um, not usually a very confident person, especially not in labs, especially not with what I think I know. Um, but that got really changed and really switched around on placement. I had a really, really supportive uh, group of colleagues, um, you know, managers who were able to take me on, support me, and they were oh, constantly encouraging me. They were giving me loads of feedback, really positive, and they were also sort of challenging me a bit. You know, it wasn't long before, you know, I'd, I'd been doing a couple of little method developments. I'd been, you know, my hand had been held a little bit at the start. And then a couple of months in, um, right, we've got this new problem, we need you to develop a method, we need it to be suitable for this instrument, here you go, have fun. <laughs> um, and I was a little bit daunted by it, uh, to be honest, and I thought, are they sure, are they sure they want me to do this? Uh, you know, you get a bit of imposter syndrome sometimes, and I didn't think I was ready for it, but they clearly thought that I was. Uh, and I got on with it, and everything managed to work out okay. And I was like, wow, you know, I've done it. <laughs> So that has then put confidence in me, put confidence that I can do it, but also that they already knew and they already believed that I could do it as well. So that environment was really, really great for that. And on top of that, I was really fortunate that I got to work on a couple of publications as well. So, you know, I might, might get my name on that because I did help to collect some of the data. So that's another really big step. And of course, I'd imagine they wouldn't ask me to help do that if they didn't think that I'd be able to do it to the right standard or the way that they wanted it to. So that again, big confidence boost in me. So I could go on and on about how amazing my placement was because it was it was really great in so many different ways, so many different uh, valuable aspects that I've got from it, so many things, so many lessons that I've taken from it as well. I did make quite a few mistakes and yes, I've learned from it. And you know, I'm taking that with me, I'm taking that into uni. Now into my third year, uh, we're coming up to Christmas time, so it is starting to get a little bit stressful. Uh, things are starting to really kick into gear. But coming back, you know, you forget how different working as a student is. 
uh, it sounds kind of silly, but as a student, you have so much freedom, so much freedom of how you spend your time, when you want to do things. Um, you know, do you do it in the first couple of weeks you get it set? Do you start work at 9 a.m.? Do you start work at 2 p.m.? Uh, every little aspect part of that and, you know, managing sports, hobbies, you know, doctor's appointments and things around that as well, which is obviously a great benefit of student life and having that flexibility around your lectures and when you choose to work. But it means that you can also kind of fall into really bad habits really quickly. Um, I found at the start, it didn't help that I got freshers flu in the first couple of weeks as well, not COVID. Um, so that sort of brought me down a little bit. You know, uh, I wasn't, didn't feel like I was managing my time. I didn't feel like I was keeping up. And, you know, I had a really good rhythm. I had a really good routine while I was on placement um, because of kind of it forces you to, you know, you have to go to work today. <laughs> Um, but you don't have to go to your lectures today because, oh, you can catch up on it later. So it's sort of this little tricky trap that you can really easily um, fall into. Um, so, you know, you get to a point where you're like, right, kick yourself into gear. You're going to get up at this time every day. You're going to start work at this time every day. You know, as it's getting darker as well, uh, you know, four, it's getting dark at four o'clock now, which is scary, which means that you've got to make the most of your daylight hours to get your work done because no one likes to work in the dark. It, well, at least not, at least I don't. <laughs> Some people do enjoy that, but I really don't. Um, so I was like, right, let's, let's get this sorted. Let's get going. And I feel so much better for it. I feel a lot more on top of things. And, you know, that works for some people. For me, that's worked really well. So whatever routine or whatever structure that works for you, it's always good to go back to that. I think that's why it worked really well for me on placement is because I had that sort of routine. I had that sort of structure and I felt like I was constantly ticking things off. I was getting things done, getting through the day, felt like I was on top of things. And I think that's the part that I'd kind of lost coming back to uni. So uh, it wasn't the best of starts. I still managed to keep up with most things. Uh, but I've really kind of given myself a little little bit of a kick in the bum and got myself sorted. So now I feel a lot better, I feel organised, ready to go into Christmas, plan out some revision, get ready for the exams uh, in January. So that's sort of where I'm at at the moment. I think it's just important to remember that, you know, you've been away from university for a whole year. You're not expected to come back and be the exact same student that you were at before. It's the same thing. Um, my boyfriend, bless him, he tried to relate it to football injuries. If, you know, you've had a really bad injury, you're out for half a season or whatever it is, you come back, you're never going to be at the same form that you were when you started, right? Um, and that's how he, he reassured me that, you know, no one's expecting... Uh, you to work or be at the same place as you were when you last finished uni because you did two consecutive years you were you were right in the thick of it right in the role of it uh, you knew what you were doing so now to come back to a different structure yeah you remember what happened a couple of years ago but now uh, you've had that year year sort of break that year apart and now you're coming back you're reminding yourself you're refreshing yourself remembering how lectures work how do you take lecture notes <laughs> so that whole process is um yeah it's been a little bit challenging but it's been good and it's been really good to get into it I'm really looking forward to carrying on with the year I'm also really looking forward to doing the masters next year and just sort of extending my lifetime at Loughborough at the end of the day the great thing about placement is that you can really easily choose whether or not to do one so if you're looking at applying to Loughborough uh, maybe you've got an offer already uh, you're looking at putting us down on UCAS then you might see loads and loads of different options and some of them include a placement and some of them don't the great thing is that you don't actually have to decide right now whether you do or not. It doesn't matter which option you put down. Because uh, as you're coming into second year and you're looking at maybe doing one between um, second and third year, then you know you can really quickly and really easily talk to your personal tutor. And it's, it's a five minute conversation for you to say, actually, I've decided I really want to go do a placement. Or you've decided, I want to just finish my degree, I want to just get on with it. Um, could you take the placement year off? And it is as easy as that, as simple as that, it just gets updated on the system. There is a cutoff, but I know people who've been looking for a placement um, and then up until the summer, they might have been on track not to do one. And then all of a sudden they've got one 
uh, and the summer before term starts, they've already changed it and said, actually, I'm not coming back next year, I'm going on placement. And that's been absolutely fine and it's been changed. So you don't need to worry too much about getting that sorted right away. It's just something that you can think about for the next couple of years and what you want to do. So that's probably everything from me. Of course, my placement experience is quite different to anyone else. If you ask anyone else about their placement or how they came back to uni. So any questions about anything related to that or anything in general that you want to ask us women in science ambassadors, then please uh, send us an email, get in contact with us. We'd love to hear from you. And yeah, I think that's, that's all from me for now. I hope you've maybe enjoyed a slightly different format of doing this. We'll see how that goes for the future. And yeah, hope you all have a great Christmas break and a happy new year. Thank you. Bye.